Hey brewers and beer lovers, welcome to episode two of the Brewing Up an Adventure podcast where I talk about home brewing, life, and good beer. So this is a beer that I am super excited about um, ever from the time that I saw John Christensen post the first I think it was on Instagram was where I saw it initially um, that he was going to be making a mole spice stout, which to me sounds awesome because I love mole. I love spicy foods. I love chocolate and I love beer. So that's, it's like a match made in heaven. But this beer was a collaboration between John Christensen, the owner of Zymergy Brewing in Menominee, Wisconsin, um, Matt Abrahamian, sorry about your name pronunciation, um, who is the lead brewer at the Fermentorium in Wisconsin, and the chef owner of the Sanford restaurant, um, I believe the Sanford and the Fermentorium are all in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, or are both in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, Cedarburg, Wisconsin is where the Fermentorium is. Um, but they were all good friends uh, in the little story on the can. It says that John was the person that taught Matt how to homebrew, uh, 15 years ago and um, so it's just sounds like a cool beer with cool motivations and cool people so um, yeah let's get into it I should be pouring it with the label towards the camera, but I'm right-handed, so this will be a little awkward. All right. We'll see if we can get a, get a, a frame grab uh, when I edit the video, but cheers. Oh, there's, John makes really good stout. And there's, in the aroma, the first thing that hit me was um, that sweetness that I sometimes get with a really good stout where it's, um, it's like uh, just, when, if you've ever made caramel, it's like right when the butter and sugar in the pan is just starting to turn just a light golden brown color. I'm getting that. And it's kind of hard to pick out because, oh man, <laughs> this smells awesome. Um, there's a strong but not overpowering like cinnamon aroma as well as like I'm I can smell a little bit of the the heat from the peppers that are in this and then like that heat starts to fade and the the remaining aroma is like snickerdoodle cookies almost but like the the heat from the pepper doesn't completely go away so it's like a spicy snickerdoodle maybe so man if it tastes half as good as it smells this is gonna be a good beer
I wish this was warmer. So that there's a definite roasty note that's there. Like I I saw that they used um toasted corn husks as part of this. Um, I assume to be reminiscent of like tamales and just really good Mexican food. So um, there's a, a little hint of char that does not taste like, char is not the right word. Um, like a dark toastiness um, that uh, like it's it's not burned tasting but it's definitely a dark dark roasted flavor um, mm. on the palate the sweetness is not as strong as the aroma. Um, so it tastes like it tastes like a stout. Like that's the the baseline, and that is one of the things that I love about John's beers is First and foremost, they are beer. Like, there's a definite beer flavor. I've had beers that, you know, taste like orange juice or uh, bacon or like weird strong flavors where you don't really taste anything that's beer flavored. But this, first and foremost, Tastes like a stout. Mm. Yeah, that like that's a really good stout. And then as the flavors fade, or like there's that pronounced stout flavor up front, and then as that starts to fade. I'm starting to pick up, like, I can actually taste um, the pepper. Like, hot peppers have such a good fruity flavor. And I'm definitely getting a little bit of that. And then, like, the heat is very subdued. So it's not over overpowering in any way. And then as it continues to fade, yeah, it's just that lingering goes back to like almost a French roast coffee flavor in the finish. And it just makes me want to drink more of it, which is dangerous. 6.6% alcohol by volume. And like, John did a really good job um, with uh, fermentation on this. There's no weird, like, hot alcohol flavors. There's no, like, I'm not picking up any sort of weird off flavors or diacetyl or anything like that. Like, this is just a really good, really good beer. So. If you're around Menominee or the Fermentorium in Cedarburg, um, check it out. Like, I understand it's not for everybody, but it's a damn good beer. Mm. Mm -hmm. 
So, for episode two, the the homebrewing topic that I want to talk about is I debated whether to call it look before you leap or thinking ahead or something along those lines because one of the things that I've kind of picked up in my own homebrewing experience and having helped other people get into the hobby is when I started, I kind of just jumped in and bought the stuff that I thought I needed at the time. And as I was, like, I, I brewed, I think, three or four batches of extract before I went to all grain. And at the time, um, there was a bunch of podcasts talking about brewing 10 gallons versus brewing five gallons really doesn't take that much more time. So why wouldn't you just brew 10 gallons? Um, and so that's what I sized my brew system for. I bought a converted keg from somebody. So I had a 15 gallon boil kettle. I bought a 72 quart rectangular cooler so that I would have enough volume to uh, hold a mash for a 10 gallon batch of beer. Um, and then I would run off into buckets and um, cause I had to use my, the same kettle for both sparge and um, boil initially. And so I jumped into making 10 gallon batches, but the thing that I didn't think about was that, yeah, the brew day might take an extra 45 minutes, maybe an hour extra to do 10 gallons versus five gallons. But then on packaging day, whether you're bottling or kegging, you have twice as much work to do, especially if you're like me who bought uh, some 15 gallon plastic fermenters that like once I started, once I siphoned out the first five gallons, I was committed. I had to bottle all of it. Otherwise, um, like the, the process just drew air into the fermenter because I didn't have a CO2 tank to push it out of the fermenter. Hadn't even considered that step yet. Um, but like there, there are like, I could have split that 10 gallon batch right out of the boil kettle into two fermenters with five gallons each. And then I would only have to bottle five gallons at a time, um, which would have been more convenient in some ways, but then it's also two bottling sessions rather than just one. And if I had been set up for kegging at the time, like maybe that would have made it better uh, so that um, I would have just had to fill two kegs instead of uh, 96, about a hundred bottles per 10 gallon batch, which some people like bottling. It is not my favorite activity in the world. Um, but you know, it, I had to do it. So all of that long drawn out explanation to say, I wish that I had taken the time to think about what I wanted my home brewing to look like. Um, I'm pretty sure I would have stuck with five gallon batches if I had thought that far ahead, especially not jumping into 10 gallons right away because that, that got to be a bit much and actually I think intimidated me 
so that I did not brew as frequently as I would have liked. And so that that is a, a concern. So um, there's that part of it. There's also a lot of people who might be interested in home brewing don't have a ton of space. Like you might be in an apartment. Um, we downsized from a, a house with about 2000 square feet of living space where I had a dedicated room to storing all of my brewing gear that I did bottling and kegging in and it stored my malt and grains and everything and the house that we're renting now um, is right around a thousand square feet so basically we lost half of our space which means now all of my homebrew gear is sharing a garage with the car, my snowboarding equipment, mountain biking equipment, the lawnmower, my son's bike, my wife's bike, my wife's kayak, as you can see. Um, and so like, if I just had a five gallon system, like it would actually fit better in this location and if you have even less space than I do like five gallon batches might not even be reasonable like there are lots of people who are happy with home brewing and being able to experiment with one and two gallon batches so like if space is an issue think about how much space you have to dedicate to your home brewing both the setup and then also the fermentation because the fermentation you're going to need a, a dedicated spot that you can kind of control the temperature and um, it's not gonna like vigorous fermentations that airlock starts spraying bubbles if it's really vigorous beer gets in there and then you're splattering beer on whatever um whatever space your fermenter is in so those are some definite concerns to think about and like the other concern especially when you're first getting started in home brewing is cost like you can spend as much money as you want to spend on home brewing gear like i've seen awesome semi-automated three vessel systems for anywhere from around a thousand dollars to several thousand dollars but if you're just getting started and you're doing extract, you might already have a five gallon kettle you can use or a slightly larger than five gallon kettle or whatever size kettle for your desire. And so you might only need to pick up a fermenter and ingredients and you're all set. And um, so like that obviously is a much smaller cash outlay to get started versus buying all of the gear that is basically a smaller version of what professional brewers use which isn't a bad thing but it is a concern so if you're just looking to get started in home brewing think about how much time you want to spend on your brew day and packaging day, how much space you have available for your brewing and fermenting and what your budget is. And like, you might decide five gallons is the best bet for you. You might decide 10 gallons is the best bet for you. Like everybody's different. Pick what works for you and go with that. And as I'm recording this, it is New Year's Eve 2020. 
which I know 2020 has a kind of a deserved poor reputation because a lot of rough stuff happened this year and I don't want to deny that but I also want to leave 2020 on a more positive note and I would like to express gratitude for my wife she's awesome and just all of the support and love that she has shown to me during this year through our challenges um, we I am also thankful that we were able to move to Haley, Idaho um, so that we could be near a world-class ski resort so I can snowboard on way better hills than what was back in Wisconsin and I'm extremely grateful for the opportunity to do that and I am extremely grateful to my family and friends for um, just being awesome. Like I, I have some really good, really cool friends and family and I'm thankful for homebrewing and I'm thankful for good beer. So on that note, with all of the gratitude that I just expressed, I'm ready to move forward into 2021. Let's go get it. Get after it. Let's make some good beer. And like this beer, man, like grew up an adventure. It like this is an adventure in flavor. And I am so happy that I got to taste it. So yeah. Cheers.